Lesson 8-7, Solving Inequalities. For more references and examples, please look at page 367 to 373. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, we solve inequalities the same way we would solve an equation. Okay? Uh, this will be a one-step inequality. So do you notice here that we have the x minus 3 is less than 10? Okay? We're not saying that it's equal to 10, we're saying that it's less than 10. So the first thing we need to do is try to isolate this variable. And to isolate the variable, we must get rid of the negative 3, so we add 3. Whatever we do to one side of the inequality, we have to do to the other side. So we add 3, and it gets rid of the negative 3. Leaves us with just the x, okay, as you see right there. And on this side, we add uh, 3 to the 10, and we get 13. So x is less than 13. How do we graph this? Well, we can draw a line graph, right? And we, roll, we write all the numbers, and we're saying that x is less than 13. You see how this side is colored blue? We're saying that x can be 12, 11, 10, 9, any of these values, but not 13. It's not equal to 13, so for that reason, it's not colored in. For that reason, we just draw a circle, and we leave it hollow. Okay? So here's the question you have to do for your independent practice. 43 to, I believe, only 50. Right there up to question 50. Let's do a couple together. Uh, let me pick one or two. Let me do, um, I'll do maybe, I'll do 45 and I'll do 48. Okay? So for 45 we have, so here we have negative 0.3z is less than or equal to negative 2.4. Okay? Let's uh, isolate the variable by using the division property of inequality, so I'm going to divide it by the same number, negative 0 0.3, that's gone, and at least with my z, is less than or equal to, and I divide this side out also by a negative, okay? Now, I just made a little mistake, let me rewind here, there we go. I'm gonna, if I divide this side out by a negative 0 0.3, now listen carefully to this boys and girls, if I am dividing the other side of the inequality by a negative, okay, this is going to change because I have negative divided by negative. It's going to change the value entirely. This is going to change the value entirely to a positive. If this were positive and I was dividing it by a negative, it would change it to a, a negative. So what, what's happening here is it's changing the entire value of this side. So this inequality is no longer true. And what ha what's happening here is that we have to now change the direction of the inequality. It used to be less than, now it's going to be greater than or equal to, okay? And when I divide uh, negative 2.4 divided by negative 0.3, I'm going to get a positive, negative by negative divided by negative is positive, and it's going to be 8, okay? So, z is greater than or equal to 8. Is that true? Well, let's substitute it. If I multiply a negative, if I multiply a negative here, times a positive 8, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for 30% of 8. And 30% of 8 is 24. I mean, 2.4. And it's going to be negative. You know what? Let's do, um, let's do question 47 as well together so that you can see it again what, what we just did. Okay? So I have negative 5x is less than negative 13. I'm going to go ahead and divide it out, use the division property of equality to divide both sides out. And now I'm left with x, okay, and on this side I'm dividing a negative divided by negative, it's going to turn to a positive. And that positive is going to be 2.6. But my sign has to change around. Anytime you divide the other side of the inequality by a negative, your sign needs to change directions. Please make note of that, it's very important. And here we have a two-step inequality for number 48. Two-thirds of x plus 7 is greater than 13. Let's go ahead and first get rid of the 7. Okay, so minus 7 on this side and minus 7 on this side. And it's going to leave me with 6. This is gone. And now I have two-thirds of x is 6. So two-thirds of a number is 6. I can already figure it out. I know x is 9 because this is two-thirds of 9, isn't it? So two-thirds of a number is not is 6. So this has to be 9 because this is two-thirds of 9. Makes sense. 
but how do we solve this now? Well, we have to use the multiplicative inverse to get rid of the two-thirds. So the multiplicative inverse is 3 over 2. Okay? And when I cross-reference to simplify, oh, this I will also get multiplied by 3 over 2. Don't forget, whatever you do one side, you do the other. So when we cross-reference, these two are gone, and these two are gone. So I'm left with x. x is greater than 6 times 3 is 18. Right? Divided by 2 is 9. Let me help you with question 50 as well. Teams can spend at most $36 for cupcakes. At the very most, he can spend $36. So he has to spend less than $36. So right away I'm thinking he has to spend less than $36. You see, whatever he's spending has to be less than $36. Uh, Tim can spend at the most $36. Oh, so he can also spend equal to $36. So it has to be less than or equal to $36. I hope you're understanding how to interpret these messages. Okay. If each cupcake costs $3, okay, write and solve an inequality, show the maximum number of, so, of cupcakes he can buy. So I, I can buy $3. How many cupcakes can I buy? Each cupcake is $3. How many can I buy? I know I can buy, I, I, it has to equal at the very most 36 or less than. I already can tell you that it's 12, right? Because 3 times 12 is 36, and it can be equal to it or less. So this number, the maximum it can be is 12. But let's go ahead and solve it. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x is less than or equal to 12. If you can't go, you can't buy more than 12 cupcakes, essentially is what we're saying. Okay?